Welcome to Ohio's and Byways. It's a podcast about Texas. I'm your host, Chris Carlisle. Today I'm going to tell you about a uh, legendary uh, Texas radio station, a uh, famous restaurant in Amarillo, a uh, ghost town, a, uh, and a famous Texas outlaw. But first, we'll get some headlines. The uh, library in uh, Belton is getting new furniture as the uh, Belton City Council approved uh, $234,962 for the new furniture for the Alina Armstrong Public Library. The uh, furniture is going to help uh, transform the main room, uh, the meeting room, and the children's room. They've uh, started signing up uh, people for the uh, honor flights for the Betty Martin chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution, which is celebrating its 120th anniversary this year. Honor flights uh, take uh, veterans on uh, trips to uh, Washington, D.C., Texas State Controller uh, Glenn Haylard's office said on Tuesday that uh, Texas is lagging in home building. Home building uh, didn't keep up uh, in Texas uh, as millions uh, came in and the economy boomed during the last uh, decade. The uh, state, is, uh, state of Texas has taken uh, steps to uh, protect its mountain lion pro- population. They're investigating uh, the collapse of uh, some bleachers at a uh, rodeo in Bernie where 12 people got hurt. In Lubbock, a a food bank that has been handcuffed by uh, inflation and politics is uh, using an orchard uh, to uh, collect food. Temple uh, school teacher Jamika Gray is a uh, finalist for the uh, Teacher of the Year Award. Ms. Gray uh, teaches kindergarten at Kennedy Powell Elementary. The uh, storm uh, cleanups in uh, Temple have uh, doubled. A uh, ministry in Longview is helping thousands recover through its Men's Life Recovery Program. Nice to look at one of the top uh, forty, one of the first uh, top forty radio stations in uh, Texas. Okay, that's the type of music you would have heard in the 1950s on uh, such radio stations as KLIF in Dallas. It sat on the air in 1947 at 1190 on the dial. In the 50s, uh, led by uh, Gordon McClendon, it became one of the first stations to play the uh, format now known as uh, Top 40, which uh, featured the new uh, music genre called rock and roll. McClendon also owned uh, KILT uh, 610 AM in Houston, which also had a top 40 format. For years, the uh, KLIF was the top station in Dow- DFW. And during the time, it was called, had the nickname the Mighty 1190. Shows on KLIF included the KLIF House Party and Bandstand. Some of the DJs were Ron Chapman, Gary Mack, Gary Owens, Rod Roddy, and the legendary Charlie Van Dyke. Ron Chapman later went to work at KVIL in Dallas, while Gary Owens became a uh, Went to Hollywood and did a lot of work out there. He's probably best known as the announcer on Laughing. Rod Roddy uh, took over for the legendary Johnny Olson as the announcer on The Price is Right with Bob Barker. Charlie Van Dyke can be heard uh, doing voiceovers for uh, different news uh, openings on lo- local stations around the country, including in Texas, like uh, Channel 2 uh, KPRC TV. I listened to an air check on uh, YouTube uh, from uh, DJ uh, George Singer from November of 1956. There was a promo for a contest, a weather report, and a live report of a plane crash. The station also broadcast uh, the MLB Game of the Day, which was a a recreation of MLB uh, baseball games years before uh, the Astros uh, started in Houston, of course, the Rangers in uh, Dallas-Fort Worth. Dallas broadcaster Wes Wise, who later became the mayor of Dallas, worked on the Game of the Day broadcast with Gordon McClendon. Besides uh, being having a uh, top uh, DJs in Dallas, or some of the top DJs, they also had uh, pretty good news. They uh, called their newscasts uh, 2020 News and 2020 Double Power News, with uh, Gordon McClendon providing commentaries. In fact, you can find uh, and hear a uh, coverage uh, through its coverage of the uh, JFK assassination on YouTube. 
They uh, covered the day starting with the president's day in Fort Worth uh, that, mor- that morning and his arrival at Love Field in Dallas, as well as updates on the uh, condition of the gov- of Governor Connolly. The first bulletin came in around 12.30, reporting that the president and the governor had been shot. That was by reporter Joe Long. Mr. Long had also recovered the president's arrival at Love Field. There was a report from reporter Gary DeLong about an APB for a possible suspect. And uh, Gordon McClendon was heard reporting uh, from the trademark where the uh, president was supposed to have given a speech. There was, was a report from, uh, that said that Secret Service agent Clint Hill said that the president was dead. But, but in that same report, uh, they said that Congressman Jim Wright uh, from Fort Worth uh, said the uh, president and the governor were still alive at the time. Another report said that the uh, said both Mrs. Kennedy and Mrs. Connolly were safe and that the, uh, a priest had been asked to uh, come to a Parkland hospital. And there was also eyewitness accounts from the scene. They were reported of an aide to the governor saying that the shots had come from the back. A report that the last rites had been admitted to the president. There were also the reports of the rumors of the president's death. There were reports of finding a rifle and shells in the uh, Texas school book deposit Texas school book depository building, and the announcement of the president's death made by Gordon McClendon. There was an account of, a, of the capture of Lee Harvey Oswald by a Dallas police sergeant, and the revelation of Oswald's name. There was the recording of uh, LBJ of Vice President Lyndon Johnson being sworn in on Air Force One by uh, Judge Sarah T. Hughes. There was the, the interview with the lady who. Uh, owned the house that Oswald had stayed at. She said he had been living there just, just over a month. And she said she saw him that morning. There was also where he, uh, reports uh, where Gordon McClendon was talking about uh, past, assassina- past assassinations like that of Abraham Lincoln, James Garfield, and William McKinley. There was a report on the arraignment of Lee R. V. Oswald for the murder of Dallas policeman J.D. Tippett. And a uh, talking about another eyewitness account of from a of the assassination from an SMU student. They had talked about the changes in the motorcade, uh, about stuff going back and forth between Washington and the uh, local Democratic Party. They said the uh, Secret Service had been concerned about a uh, president being shot in a motorcade. They also said that they and the other media in Dallas had uh, been uh, screened prior to the president's arrival. And there was a recording of uh, Oswald's uh, remarks to the press at midnight. A lot of these guys have uh, since uh, passed on, and uh, when they were alive, uh, at the, uh, they would often take part in panel discussions at the uh, Sixth Floor Museum in Dallas. And I saw one with uh, Gary DeLong, that Gary DeLong took part in talking about the shooting of Oswald. That he was one of the reporters there at the uh, city hall, city jail, when he, Oswald was shot by was shot by uh, Jack Ruby. After the shooting, he ran all the way to the uh, KLIF studios, and after he caught his breath, uh, gave a report on the shooting. Back to the music now. In the 1970s, the uh, KLIF uh, switched to country. Eventually, Gordon McClendon. Uh, sold uh, both KLIF and KILT. As uh, music uh, migrated from AM to FM, KLIF was switched to a uh, talk format, which, which it still has to this day. In 1990, it moved to its uh, current uh, dial position at 570, switching with the uh, station that had been uh, WFAA. All right, next I'll tell you about the big state, big, uh, Tex- Big Texan Steak Ranch in Amarillo is famous for its contest uh, where you eat a 72 ounce uh, steak. It was opened in 1960 by a man named R.J. Bob Lee. And it was uh, first located along Route 66, but later moved uh, off of I 40. Mr. Lee got the idea for the uh, steak uh, con- eating contest after a cowboy uh, came in and said he was so hungry he could eat a cow, but he could only eat 72 ounces of beef. 
more on the contest in a bit. Now, they do have other food at the restaurant, uh, like baby back ribs, mountain oysters, barbecue, Texas fries, barbecue, Texas fries, burgers, brisket sandwiches, chicken, chicken sandwiches, fish sandwiches, chicken fried steak sandwiches, fried chicken, chicken fried steak, chicken strips, town hall, ribeye, seafood, seafood, quesadillas, and of course, steak. The outside is uh, painted yellow with the Texas flags flapping in the wind. The uh, front porch creaks as you walk on it. In the parking lot, there is a statue of a cow called uh, Big Moo, a pair of 15-foot tall uh, cowboy boots, and Big Tex Rex, a, a dinosaur wearing a cowboy hat. Inside, there is a shooting gallery and a souvenir shop. The uh, dining area is surrounded by an upper floor gallery. Now back to the contest. They have it at a table on a platform that's at the uh, front of the dining room. The table is flank flanked by U.S. and Texas flags, and there are big trash cans nearby. If you throw up during the contest, you get disqualified. They have a digital countdown clock that keeps track of the time. You have to get the uh, you have to eat a whole in an hour. Beside the steak, uh, you get shrimp, cocktail, baked potato, salad, and a roll. And like I said. You gotta eat every you gotta eat everything within an hour, and if you do, the meal is free. If you don't, you have to pay for it. It costs uh, seventy two dollars. All right, next the story of a Texas ghost town. Belzoria, Texas, in Smith County, was a thriving poor town in the 1850s along the uh, Sabine River before the railroad came along. With the Sabine being a winding uh, river, steamboats had a hard time uh, navigating it. There was talk of making the river uh, deeper, but it didn't work. The, the town at its peak has some businesses, a post office, a school, and a church. The town was abandoned in the 1870s. Next day, a report of a Texas outlaw. Colin Baker, who was born in Tennessee and moved to Texas when he was four, killed a man in 1854 in Case County in front of the man's family after the man accused him of bullying an orphan, and then he ran off to Arkansas in 1856. Baker served in both the Confederate and Union armies during the Civil War, but deserted both times. He landed in a gang of outlaw raiders and went back to Arkansas after the Civil War was over. Baker became a wanted man when he led a gang through the territory. Baker was killed in 1869 after he committed a number of crimes, including the murder of a storekeeper back in Case County in 1867 and that of an army sergeant and holding up that of the murder of an army sergeant and the holdup of a government supply wagon where he shot the driver. Now look at the calendar. They're having the uh, Cultivator of Speaker series Thursday, uh, September 12th, next Thursday, at, this coming Thursday, rather, at noon at the Cultural Activity Center in Temple. They're going to have uh, two brushes and brews, uh, watercolor paint portrait workshop events at the uh, Barrow Brewing Company in Temple. First one will be on Tuesday, September 17th, and the second one on Monday, September 30th. The time will be from 7 to 8.30 p.m. on both days. Now, before I go, here's something from the good book. It's from the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 16. And uh, Hebrews, uh, chapter uh, 4, verse 16 says, Let us there, therefore come boldly unto the uh, throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace uh, to help in time of need. I remember one time, oh, you gotta go. Okay, uh, thank you for stopping by. I'm here each week at this time. Bye bye.